Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to show you how to create a very simple animated button in Unreal Engine. So what we have is something that looks like this. Here's our player character. And I just want to say that there's many ways that you could do this. This is just one way. There's literally probably 10 different ways you can do this. I'm just trying to create a very simple button just to give you the idea of how you could do it pretty quick. I'm cutting out a lot of the not necessarily the frills, but this is just a basic button. So there's no press E or anything like that. So what happens is the player walks over here. Once he gets to proximity of the button, it goes off. And it does whatever. It stays off. Now I have it timed so he can go about his business or whatever. And then in 15 seconds, you know, the button goes back on. I just have it delayed like that. So, but you could work on that logic separately from this. This is just to show you the dynamics of the button itself. And one of the issues is trying to get a, see the button just went on again. So one of the things is just trying to find a button that looks halfway good, especially if you're not good at modeling. And unfortunately, I'm not very good at modeling. And the first step of this is basically migrating this button and its frame over to this project. So that's the very next step that we'll do. And then after that step, I'll get into the logic of this, which is fairly simple. And I'll be back in just... Okay, I'm back and we're ready to get started. So the first thing we need is a button asset. And like I said, there's many ways to do this, and this is just one way. There's a free project in the marketplace called Stackobot. An Unreal Engine uses it for tutorial purposes. It's not more than three gigabytes in size, so it's not very big. And you can delete it once you're done using it. Just go ahead and download that project, and once you have it, it'll ask you to create a project and then you'll end up with something like this. So then we're going to go ahead and open this up. And then we're going to also go ahead and open up a session of a third person template project. So that's while this is loading, uh, it's coming into existence. I already have a third person project up and running. So you're gonna have two sessions running for the moment. You're gonna have the Stackobot session and then you're gonna have this third person template running at the same time. What you wanna do is migrate a button asset from Stackobot into this project. That's all we're trying to do. So if we go into the Stackobot project, when you open it up, you should see right away in the outliner, it says BP button. So you just click that and go edit BP button. And there's two nice assets in here that we can use. We can dock this up here and you'll see this is how we're going to set up our project in our third person template. But there's a base button here. So there's a two components. There's two static meshes. There's a frame and then there's a button that you press. But I want these assets because they look pretty professional. Down here you'll see this folder. Once you have the base selected here in the components tab, you'll see this folder that says browse to the asset in the content browser and then there it is so here's what we want we want this static mesh and then we want this button so we're going to go ahead and right click on that and go asset actions and migrate that to our project that we just created it's going to bring in everything that we need so we'll go okay and the project i created is over here you've got to come and find it on your hard drive unreal projects it's project seven and we go to the content folder and we go select folder and then it'll transfer those assets. Now what's gonna happen is we gotta transfer the button. There's some files that they share in common. It's gonna ask us if we wanna overwrite and we, we do. So I'm gonna click that button or that asset, that static mesh. I'm gonna right click asset actions and go migrate and we'll go okay. And we're going to select that same content folder and go select folder. And it says it already exists. Say yes, apply to all. And it's just going to overwrite things that are duplicated. So then we should have our assets now in our third person template project. So now I can just close out a Stackobot because I'm done. So now I'm in my project seven. I'm going to come up here to window, load layout, default editor layout, content drawer, and dock it. And then you'll see we have Stackobot here. We come into UI, not UI, I guess environment. There's props and there's our two assets that we need. So this saves us a ton of work. 
So there are other assets on the marketplace too with different kinds of buttons. What we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and we're gonna create a blueprint class, an actor, and we're gonna call this BP underscore button. Button there, oh button two T's, go button. And then we're gonna go ahead and double click into this. I'm gonna go ahead and dock this up on top. And then under components, we're gonna search for a scene component because we want more functionality here. Scene component right there. And then we're gonna just drag this here like that. Then we're gonna go ahead and add a static mesh here. And we can call this base. And then we're gonna search for that frame that we just imported. Frame here. Static mesh frame, button frame, this one right there. And it comes in with the materials. See, look, and see how much work that saved us? Now we're gonna go add another static mesh. It's gonna automatically child itself to the base. We're gonna call this button and go like that. And then we're gonna search for that button, just like this, button. And there it is right there. And so what we're gonna do is we're just going to play around with some couple variables on here and fix it so that it looks like a button is being pressed. Now, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna rotate this cause it's gonna be oriented flat. So I believe on the green, we can turn it 270 degrees. I can just type 270 in. And that's how I want the button oriented. And then what we're going to search for is we're going to search for a box collision up here, right there, box collision. And we don't want this to be a child of the base. So we just drag it onto the base and they should be on the equal level. And then you can use your judgment on this, how, how far you want this thing to stick out. It's completely up to you on this, but you know, so that your character triggers it is what you want to happen once they get to a certain proximity. And that can all be adjusted later. So that's all we need for that. So in here, if we come on the static mesh, you'll see under material, there's this MI glow. And so we wanna be able to, if we click into it, you'll see there's this emissive and that's what we want to turn off and on when the button gets pressed. So to be able to access this, we need to create a material parameter collection, but maybe we don't. Let me see, I'm gonna, <laughs> let's double check. Maybe I can just access it. I might just be able to access it. Forget I said that. So what we're gonna do is on the box, this is gonna be triggered when the player character comes in proximity of it. So we're gonna go to, down here on event begin and on component begin overlap, click that button. Okay. And the first thing we want to do is compile and save this. The first thing we want to do is we want this, if we come back here on the viewport and look at this button and I click on the button itself, if I come over here on these properties here on the location, what we want to do is if you if you watch, if you grab this and you push it in, you can decide how far you want it to go in. But let's say the button goes in by 10, negative 10 degrees. That's just remember that value, negative 10 degrees. So when the when the player comes in, the, the button is gonna be lit up and it's gonna be sticking out. When they set this trigger, we want this to go in negative 10 degrees. So just remember that. So we'll go back to the event graph. We're gonna get our button here, drag off of here, and go, we should get set relative location. This one right here. And we wanna split this struct right here. And it's gonna be on the Z. And we don't even need, I don't think we need a variable for this. So it's gonna be negative 10 degrees. So we just type in negative 10 right there like that. And then we're gonna put this in here like that. 
and then that when the actor crosses this the button should go in 10 degrees and we want it to be lit so then the next thing we want to do is turn off the emissive color so we're going to drag we can drag off the button again here and we should be able to find set parameter let's see set here it is set scalar parameter value on materials that's what we want and it's going to ask it's asking for the name and the name is emissive and it has to be spelled exactly correct i thought we needed a material parameter collection but we don't we can access it this way with just this one node so then this just plugs into there and we want it to go to zero because if we go back to that material you see it's on four and zero will turn that off so that's all we have to do for that now the next part if I go let's see if this works so this should work just off of this so let's go ahead in here and let's drag our button into the scene now I should mention let me get down here and look at this I should mention that you can scale this button down if you want as well like if it's too if you think it's too big now what I'm going to do for right now is I'm just going to turn off all the snapping so that I can just take this right up to the wall get a closer look here I want it to be flush with the wall it's hard to see gosh okay I just want it flush with the wall it shouldn't cause any problem there that's pretty flush okay so let's see if this works so I'll go make sure I compile and save everything and let's hit play and see if it goes off yep that's it it's perfect so now it just stays off right now and you could honestly just leave it like this right here it's a one shot button thing that happens and you're done but let's say you want the button to pop back out well that should be simple enough to do you can have it as a one and done thing that you just get one shot turn the button on and that's it or if you wanted to add it to reset that's very easy to do and the logic that you do that with is completely up to you but one thing you could do is simply if we go back into BP button we simply go to the box and we can go on component end overlap and that's on the box component and then all we have to do is simply reverse what we did so we just select these nodes go control D and what you could do one thing you could do and this is what I might suggest doing is just adding a delay in there because just assume that the person turned the button on and then after so long it just resets again or you could have them go to some other section of the game and they do something and that causes the button to reset it just depends on you but this is essentially just a reset function that we're creating but i'll just put it here so there's some delay so the person sees oh i turned the button on and it's staying on and then they walk away and then it resets and how would they even know so but we could set this for let's say 10 seconds and then we plug this in here and then we plug this in here and then we should just be able to set these values again so here I could just set that back to zero and here we'd set the emissive back to four four I put it I put four four and let's compile and save that and see if that does the trick so we come back in we go play there's our button and I don't think you need to put the press E because I think it'll be obvious what it is when they come up to it and there it goes and then in 10 seconds hopefully it should pop back out seems like a long 10 seconds but let's see yep it does so however you want to do the reset is up to you and like I said the other thing is you could scale this button in the blueprint scale it down if it seems a little bit too much but anyway I hope you found this helpful take care and have a great 2024